Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Camera Tuesday. In today's episode, we're going to discuss which company to buy, basically which camera company you should buy. Now first thing you have to understand it, whenever you are talking about interchangeable lens camera, you are not talking about a camera body, it's not like Samsung mobile phone or Sony mobile phone, you can't jump between those because you are investing in a system, that is the critical aspect and when I say system, I don't only mean in terms of like okay, uh, camera and lens, I mean flash, I mean battery and I mean third party supports with accessories and all that. So all those make it into a system and you have to be very thoroughly aware of the fact that uh, let's say for some reason many people thought like okay, hey, Fuji released a very awesome body and you're like everybody is giving it great reviews you bought it but the first thing you realized wait a minute the lenses are not available the specific lens that I want is not available and the fact that the lenses that are available they are not available physically in your location you have to buy, uh, import them and all that and that is uh, you know in increasing their price by twofold or threefold so you also have to take that into account first and foremost Camera is a part of ecosystem. Once you start to do photography seriously or professionally, what do I mean by professionally? It simply means you are making a money out of it, basically living out of it, then it's professional. And if you are in like high-end professional, like uh, sports photography or things of that nature, your camera body would be the cheap part. Your lenses will be the most expensive aspect of the system. So you also uh, have to think in this way that lens is the main investment you're not investing in the camera body yet. let's say you are buying uh, let's say canon 800 same as i have done i'm not buying the canon 800 i'm buying canon ecosystem aka canon uh, format lenses so again if the canon has lenses or awesome lenses for me i'm set but if the lens selection is not suiting my needs i'm dead so that is why you have to understand this nobody can tell you which is best system for you you have to decide it with your like you you have to sit down and calmly decide what is best suited for you because there are many reasons for many people like fuji is awesome but uh, for many of them like who are living in europe fuji is awesome many who are living in india fuji they don't even know about it and i can't blame them it's like uh, if i say like uh, like canon and nikon is at 100 percent in terms of market uh, penetration sony would be like around uh, 70 to 85 percent fuji would be zero like flat out only in big cities you you can even find places that says okay fuji i sell it here so that is the main uh, critical aspect of you have to think of this as a system you have to look into the hey if i want to buy let's say a uh, remote intervalometer remote uh, how expensive that is gonna be like and if you are like hey i'm gonna buy flash shoes and all that i need that for flash photography uh, flash photography i'm saying micro photography uh, you're like yeah what is the cost of that so all those things must factor into your decision because that is why i'm specifying it is a system not a camera body now, okay, let's say you have selected a company, which format? Generally, most company have more than two formats. Generally, most of them have two. So in here, I can simplify it very simply. Full frame is game. Now think of it this way. I already made a detailed video about mirrorless versus DSLR and the TLDR version of that is mirrorless is the future, DSLR is the old version. Same way SLR was replaced by DSLR, DSLR will be replaced by mirrorless. Again, it will take time. It's not one day uh, event. But you have to understand this, the 35 millimeter, the quote unquote full frame became full frame because it has been used for more than 50 years. And 35 millimeter is a small format compared to what was used 50 years ago. Like I'm talking at the beginning of uh, film photography, people used to have film that was one foot by one foot. I'm not joking, like literally one foot by one foot. I, my, my father had a film camera, uh, SLR, no, not SLR, as in a range finder that was medium format. So it, uh, we are like, uh, uh, aware of the fact that uh, 35 millimeter from those point of view was a small it's a like quote unquote crop but because it was like successfully integrated like the film format the format was integrated with the slr so well that it became the de facto standard everything was standardized to 35 millimeter so full frame is the game flat out there is no discussion about like APS-C film was also tried, APS-C digital sensor was created because it was cheaper, but flat out none of them took off. APS-C film flat out died and APS-C uh, sensor did not uh, catch on. Even though you may think like they're, because they are selling so many cheap DSLRs, you may think oh APS-C is the king, but flat out full frame is. Now this is the very critical aspect. This is the part where many people trip is that if you want to buy quality lenses, largest and cheapest lens collection is available for full frame. Now you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I get the large selection because right now let's say uh, take example of sony you go into sony and you're like okay show me 35 millimeter lens selection there is like 30 plus lenses you select aps there is barely 18 so you're like okay I got the uh, large lens selection. How the heck it's cheap? Now there it is a very critical uh, aspect. And this is how, uh, why uh, Micro Four Third quote unquote failed. Now again, many people are like, no, it's not failed. Again, wait, just wait five years. 
like after that uh, the first thing you have to understand let's take a very recent example this lens was released uh, with uh, sony a6600 so okay very new release now this is uh, aps-c 60, uh, 16 millimeter to 55 millimeter again a uh, full frame equivalent is 24 millimeters to 82 millimeters Okay, good enough. Right? Now f 2.8. Now this is where most people make the mistake. They multiply the crop factor to the millimeter, but they never do that with the aperture. Now that is the biggest mistake. Like if you think like if you have ever seen a proper full frame camera with proper full frame lens as in 2.8 lens, the background blur is majestical. Now you you buy this, you're like, okay, I'm gonna connect this to my A6400 and I'm gonna get the same result. You will be like, okay, it's there. Background blur is there. It's just not good. Why? because it's f4.2 that is the critical aspect the moment you composite for aperture all the full frame lens will start to become cheap to give you a context okay so this lens is 24 uh, millimeter to 82 uh, millimeter full frame equivalent f4.2 not even f4 f4.2 and it, it has a range of 3.4 x so how much you can zoom in and zoom out now this is 500 grams and it cost 1 lakh rupees now again don't, uh, don't focus on the currency just focus on the number uh, basically 100,000 100, 100 uh, 490 so basically this is the new lens now here's a full frame equivalent of that this is uh, basically 24 to 105 millimeters so basically it has more range instead of uh, 3.4 x it has 4.3 x flat out more range basically and it is f4 constant so not only it is brighter compared to f4 it's constant again it's a larger range it has optical image stimulation basically if you buy a sony a6400 this is the best lens option for you because if you buy this you have to always shoot in high iso otherwise you will get motion blur this has optical image stabilization now this was is only uh, basically one lakh fourteen thousand little bit more basically in terms of x factor how much is more like uh, if this was one this is 1.11 x so little bit more you are getting one x more range you are getting optical image stabilization and you might think okay what if this is like two three kilos this is 500 grams this is 663 grams so that's the whole point and that's solely because of like optical image stabilization and the fact it has more range so that's how you understand it's like flat out because a full frame lenses have been sold for like 50 years and when digital came out for the nikon and canon uh, the photographers they did not ditch their lenses they did, uh, they stayed with the basically full frame lenses full frame sells far more than aps-c system that is why aps-c lenses are inherently expensive even though they are physically lighter and if you think this is expensive try micro four third lenses you will be like surprised like they're physically lighter like one kilogram of micro four third lens is like uh, three times the cost of a full frame equivalent so flat out not enough of it has been sold like APS-C is only 20 year old format barely micro four third that's barely 15 years old and both of them were built on a false premise specifically uh, micro four third the whole reason panasonic jumped into micro four third the idea was that uh, the sensor is the most expensive part which is not anymore the most expensive part right now in a camera body is the processor that is why uh, panasonic can give you a micro four third camera for two thousand dollar and a full frame for two thousand dollars that is the whole point sensor is not the expensive part it's the processor and if again okay, i'm assuming the megapixel is the same like 24 megapixel and 24 megapixel again if you change like like you put APS-C is like you know 60 megapixel and full frame 12 megapixel you get the point so that is the whole point always buy full frame lenses because you are competing against mobile phones now and mobile phones are becoming very good with edge detection specifically now they are introducing a camera that is like built for only one thing just detecting the edge so it will detect my edge blur out everything now will it look as good as a proper camera hell no but will it look good enough absolutely that is the reason you have to have full frame because if you uh, like many, many people are like even uh, Tony and Chelsea specified like they saw an actual wedding with where there was no photographer. So you have to understand people are changing their mindset is like compared to photography because no longer photo is like whoa that there used to be a that whoa factor with DSLR. Now that's not the case. Why? Because again background blur can be achieved with uh, basically uh, you know cheap mobile phone. So only way to compensate that is have even uh, you know more dramatic uh, basically background blur. So only way to have that is full frame. So flat out in terms of format there is no discussion just go full frame okay let's understand the big daddies of this whether you should buy this or not that's up to you but what happened with these two big daddies and these have been starting with the film slr as early as 50 to 55 years ago so these are old puppies basically they know their stuff now 
both of them are losing market share now in the beginning they started to lose market share around 2004 uh, and uh, 2010 2010 where they started like okay okay something is happening so what happened was mobile phone became better uh, better and better and better and better so at this point they are losing mobile phones and sony started to came in so instead of like duopoly like canon nikon there is a sony so flat out both of these companies started to lose a massive amount of profits in their uh, camera division flat out and uh, they diversified instantly they diversified their uh, nikon started to make industrial parts like many robots have uh, Nikon encoders and uh, many medical industry have Canon equipment so you can understand like they diversified now they are making money from other ends but they are not making as much money as ca uh, from camera division as they used to so flat out their um, you know focus has shifted so their focus went from okay camera dedicated to like let's just make money because our camera is no longer make money now what why that is the case like why the heck Canon and Nikon cannot make a comeback because of the biggest hurdle they have is conflict of interest this is a very prime example this is uh, basically Nikon D850 this is Nikon Z7 again both good cameras now D850 is best of the best basically if you want quality camera if you like you you bought this and you forget about it this is the best camera for you like flat out it is amazing the has deal so is this so how the heck is so, uh, nikon is gonna make sure that people buy this because this is more expensive instead of buying this they crippled this camera because of the conflict of they want to it's like a uh, mobile uh, manufacturer is like I want to sell 3G sims and also I want to sell 4G sim. Now you might be like, that's stupid. Just sell one of them and latest one. Nikon and Canon, because they have like warehouse full of DSLRs and I'm pretty sure at least three, four DSLRs must be under construction or like, you know, in different phase of testing, which they have to release. So they are in a state where they're like, I also want to sell my super expensive DSLR, but I also want to sell my new, uh, basically um, mirrorless. So what they're doing, they're crippling their mirrorless so because Nikon is 50 years old. They know how to make a professional camera body. They know that a professional camera should have a battery grip. Awesome. They have battery grip for this. Yes, they did. Battery grip for this, if you buy, you attach it, you get a connection. So connection helps you to have shutter button on the battery grip. So basically, if you are doing vertical shooting, you don't have to shoot like this. You can directly shoot it like this. So amazing feature for professional. They have it for this, not for this. They know how to build this. But they did not did this for this again every professional requires dual card slot again there is no competition about this like you have to only lose your stuff once and you're like yeah i'm not touching any system with only single file and they have dual in this they did not put dual in this that is the whole context they know how to make a good camera they are not making it because if they did let's say if so um, nikon did best they, they just tried to do their best they are like let's try to do a best camera this will not sell so this is the conflict of interest with Nikon and Canon. Both of them are suffering. And Canon has just released uh, Nikon, uh, basically, Nikon, I'm saying Canon EOS 90T. Again, a good DSLR is just the deal. Why you are releasing DSLR in like, you know, 2019? So that's the whole problem. So they're like, okay, we are releasing a DSLR and same sensor, same capability, actually, but better capability in a mirrorless. So why will we make sure that, uh, you know, how the heck both of them sell? You can't. So they are like, okay, put USB charging on mirrorless. Don't put USB charging on DSLR. So you can understand they have internal conflict of interest. They are not able to let go. Like, okay, this is an old product. People who are going to buy this, they're going to buy this. They can buy full uh, lenses. Lenses, they are big money maker. They can utilize that lens in the mirrorless system so they could have that but rather it's like right now they're stuck they're like should i let go of my dslr and they're thinking no because enough dslrs have been sold enough dslrs are already in the production line yeah that is the conflict on it that is why both nikon and canon they know how to make professional dslrs they know how to make professional mirrorless they are not doing it i mean like compare them to panasonic panasonic's first attempt they make a body that every tom dick and harry was holding it's like damn it's like that's a professional mirrorless body they know how to make it sony does not know because sony is not old enough but these people uh, people know but they are not doing it because of conflict of interest now canon's biggest hurdle is like somebody uh, infected their brain and they are like yeah instead of releasing five six products in per range basically there used to be three aps-c camera and like three full frame cameras again rough ideas and there were like the idea was like next generation will reduce the price of the old one and then you will have a very smooth gradient like from the cheapest to a bit more expensive bit more expensive bit more expensive so now they have 30 plus DSLRs. What the hell? Why? Like they're literally creating so many products and not only that, they're crippling entire product range just so they can sell their C200 series, which is not selling enough because again, if you are thinking about buying C200, you're gonna buy that. It does not matter whether there is a cheaper alternate or not. And if you are gonna only afford, uh, let's say a DSLR for a video shooting, you're not gonna buy C200 anyway. You're just gonna jump to, uh, you know, basically Sony. And that's what Canon is facing. Canon yeah, we are losing 10% market share per year. I'm like, Seriously, stop crippling your system. Stop making hundreds of products. Now, okay, 
that's with Canon. What's the problem with Nikon? Nikon Nikon's biggest hurdle is that this is a good camera. Flat out, this is a very good camera. But the limitation is Nikon hasn't figured out how to do autofocus on sensor. Be mindful of that. Nikon's autofocus uh, in terms of uh, uh, phase shift and all that, which is like independent sensor, that is better than Canon actually. Uh, and their 3D depth tracking is actually tangibly better than Canon system. However, Canon has uh, Canon's ace up its sleeve is dual pixel autofocus. That's what killed uh, basically Nikon's edge in the market share because Nikon's at one point was like uh, ahead for uh, ahead against Canon for like around 30 35 years so the whole thing changed with uh, a Canon EOS 5D when the first time they released full frame HD camera and again this is the time like the company that you know pioneered everything now not giving 4k why because their c200 will not sell so that is the whole point they have a lot of conflict of interest even with nikon nikon does not make video camera they can easily make a very awesome video camera because you have to understand nikon is the only one in mirrorless sense that you can get 10 bit output so if you can do manual autofocus this is a very good camera so that is the problem with Canon and Nikon. They are like struggling with their own internal conflict of interest and they have way too many products. And Nikon still has to learn how to make good autofocus. Their autofocus is very good in daylight. The moment the light goes dim, it's useless basically. Now let's talk about the two new uh, kits in the town, Fujifilm and Sony. Now Fujifilm has been making actual film role for you know decades and centuries. So they know how to uh, you know make colors. That is why everybody is happy with Fuji color systems because they know how to make you feel good. Rather than having quote unquote real to life, accurate and all that, they're making film uh, simulation, the color output that feels good. And they have experience. They have experience like a, what kind of uh, quote unquote film cells, uh, what kind of people have the feedback. Because of that experience, they always know how to make good images. Now, Fujifilm only focuses on two formats, APS-C and medium format. Now, here's the trick what they are doing. They know they can't compete with Sony. It's, uh, nothing can compete against Sony. They know they can't compete against Nikon or Canon. So, they are not even fighting there. They are fighting where nobody is fighting. Nobody is making professional APS-C because that, that will be another conflict of interest. So, Fuji is putting everything plus the kitchen sink on the APS-C system. So, right now, if you want to buy APS-C system, uh, even Sony cannot give you much. You might be like, what if I buy a Sony A6600? does not have dual card slot. So you can't utilize that for professional reasons. You can do that with Fuji. So you can understand that. Uh, Fuji has like APS-C market covered and medium format. Now again, if you don't think medium format is necessary, that's absolutely for, true for most of the people. But the moment you do product photography, watch photography, things of that nature, you go to a Rolex, uh, you know, product photography and come up with a full frame, then that's the door disappear. So you have to understand that they are only making two things now the biggest hurdle with fuji even though they make a very good system very good uh, compelling argument they have very low market penetration so basically in india again if you are in europe you may have a different uh, perspective you are in japan you may have different perspective but right now in india as of me making this video the market penetration is flat out zero like if i take a nikon and canon as 100 percent these fuji is not even in the same scale so that is the biggest problem now another aspect of that fuji was not taking video seriously from day one now sony was doing that why because sony was making video camera before it was cool so you have to understand like sony have a legacy of making digital video cameras they were the first to make a full hd cinema video camera which was used for star wars prequel so you can understand sony like sony knows video like many of your movies many of your uh, tv news systems and all that they are relying on sony so sony is like i know video so their lens argument like how they are designing the lens is also following the video uh, you know specification so they have very silent lens fuji makes very slow lens like their old lenses are very slow they physically takes time to move so even if the system has good eye autofocus and all that it just takes time so flat out those two things combined that fact i can't buy it in india and the fact that lenses are not the latest and greatest makes it very hard to recommend now let's talk about Sony. Sony is attacking on two fronts APS-C and full frame again they have conflict of interest because there is two of them now again APC in medium format is not color because medium format minimum is ten thousand dollar so that's a completely different ball game so APC they want to make a money from APC but again if they make best APC the problem becomes like why the heck people will buy full frame so again you can understand conflict of interest it's not there with medium format and APC they are two different world so Sony also struggles with it. and you can easily see this in uh, Sony A6600 it's like why does not it have dual card slot why does not like certain things little things like that you will be like why so now again compared to Nikon and Canon it still has lower market penetration like let's say if I rate Nikon and Canon like because in even my smaller hometown I have more than three shops with each of them like Nikon and Canon but barely one with Sony they can buy it like uh, if I go to a shop and they're like hey I want to order a Sony one they're like sir Ajayga. like uh, they will bring it in two three days so you can understand the market penetration is there it's just not as awesome as Nikon and Canon now 
biggest hurdle with sony is that sony is japanese so company ego now this is a very critical part sony will rather die than ever change their own product lineup now this has happened with sony in time and time again specifically the most of the funniest and saddest thing was sony tried to make a betamax which was awesome it was literally better than uh, vcr counterpart here's the problem every company which included radio corporation of america which is rca the company responsible for bringing a hardware from other countries and like you know selling that and you know that time it was the grand daddy they flat out said sony please make a camera uh, basically format that can store more time basically try to reach as two hours as possible they're like no 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 we are making production hardware and production hardware is only 40 minutes because 20 minutes like if you're making one hour tv show you're only supposed to make 40 minutes and 20 minutes is reserved for advertisement that is why it's only 40 minutes so sony is like okay it's 40 minutes so 40 minutes should be good enough for everyone every tom dick and harry kept telling them and i mean companies keep telling them like from toshiba to everything it's like please make it longer there because audience does not have that luxury audience may have want to record it further like you know much uh, bigger uh, slice and they all they only get one hour slice they do not get that 40 minute slice so sony is like no 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 no. we know what is done and the whole branch died so again it's and you can see that in uh, sony's camera also sony's like we give you a touch screen but we'll not give you a touch screen it's like i will not give you a touch screen i'll rather die than give you a touch screen it's like only you can touch to focus can you use the menu like touch screen is there the physical hardware is there can you touch the menu no why not no it's like sony it's like uh, i'm rather gonna die and sell my company than uh, you know ever give you a function and that is why like you can like notice it like it take them four generation to figure out hey camera body needs to be big enough that you can actually hold it that is the first time they are releasing a body that people are like ah now it's a sony that you can hold without hurting your hands buttons that are big enough that you are like not twitching and all that which things these things panasonic figured out in one go with full frame so that is you have to understand like, that tech division awesome the division that decides what goes into a product they're like no 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 no, 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 we rather go bankrupt than like, like, and I can guarantee you, Sony A6600 is so overpriced and it has sensor that is like ancient and they make the sensor for Nikon and Fuji. Nikon and Fuji both have better color reproduction than Sony. How the heck that's happening? So you can understand, like uh, Sony has a company ego issue. So please be mindful of that. I cannot say, oh, Canon and Nikon, again, they are, you know, struggling. They are figuring things out. They may be- make awesome things. Maybe Nikon figures out autofocus, proper autofocus, and they might, uh, you know, kick ass again. Or maybe Canon finally learns from like, you know, after losing market share from dominance to like, okay, dude, we really have to like, you know, do something to, they may figure out instead of making hundreds of products, let's make few awesome products. So again, things could happen. But again, Sony, be mindful of that. Please be mindful of the ego. So this was my presentation about like uh, which camera system to buy. Now again, if you feel confused, that's the whole part of it. It takes time for you to decide what to buy and nobody else can tell you. Like you have to sit down and you have to decide with yourself. Only thing I can tell you, buy full frame and buy full frame lenses. And if you cannot afford full frame body, no problem, but do make sure full frame lenses you buy because full frame lenses are generally compatible with APS-C body. And I already showed an actual example. So. Uh, this was my presentation with uh, which company to buy. I hope you liked it. Learn from it. In that case, please click the like button. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I'd urge you to press dislike. Press this twice to show me your extra disappointment. And please leave a comment because I reply to all of them. Subscribe. Press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.